Resources are great to avoid hard-coded duplicate values in your XAML. However, they can be tedious to apply. Each property value needs to be assigned individually, which yields cluttered verbose XAML. Notice in this example, we're setting the same five properties on each of the buttons. We are using resources for the values, so we don't have repeated hard-coded values. However, the property settings are repeated across these two buttons. Users are sensitive to startup time, so it is generally considered good practice to minimize the time it takes for your UI to appear. Here we have text color being assigned from a static resource. When this XAML is loaded, there is a lookup that has to occur to locate the value of the resource. Resource lookup is fast, however, it still takes longer than assigning a hard-coded value that requires zero lookup. The solution to these problems is to create something called a style that assigns several properties all at once. Styles eliminate repetition and increase performance. A style is a way to group related property settings. It's a collection of setters for a particular type of view. A style is implemented as a collection of setters. A setter is a container for a property value pair. You can create setter objects in XAML. Remember, this represents an assignment statement. So you have to say which property will be assigned and the value to load. The setter in this example will set the text color to white. There is one caveat to keep in mind. The property you are setting must be implemented as a bindable property. In practice, most UI properties that you will need to set are bindable, so this isn't a big limitation. Here we have a style that we can use with a button. Notice that we have a setter for each of the five properties that were repeated in the two buttons from the earlier example. The style must be targeted at a specific type of UI view. The properties in the style must be part of that view type. For example, all of the properties shown above are a part of the button class. We would not be able to use the same style we created for buttons in a label because that class does not include the border color, border radius, or border width properties. Styles are shareable and as such generally defined as resources. You can apply the same style to many different control instances. You load a style by assigning to the style property. The assignment causes each of the setters to be applied to the target. As we saw, styles are typically defined in resource dictionary, so you'll want to use a resource lookup to get the style you want to apply. You can use either a static resource or a dynamic resource to look up the style in the dictionary. The style property is defined in the visual element class. Most controls inherit from visual elements, so the property is available in most controls. Using a style has two nice benefits. One, the resulting XAML is cleaner. There is just one property setting instead of several individual settings, and two, it encourages consistency. If you assign individual properties to many controls over multiple pages, it's easy to miss one or use inconsistent values. If two styles use the same property value, you can factor that value out into a resource and then apply the resource in the two setters. This lets the styles share a value which reduces repeated code. In this example, we have resources for background color and foreground color that we use as the setter values. You can use either static resource or dynamic resource for the value of a setter. The two options behave as usual for them. Static will not update if the underlying resource changes, while dynamic will. It's tedious to apply a style to every control in your entire application. It would be convenient if we could have a style applied automatically. Styles can be automatically applied to all controls of a target type. Normally, when you add something to a resource dictionary, you must specify both key and value. There is a special case with styles. A style without a key has a special meaning. It becomes an implicit style that is automatically applied to every object of its target type. The matching of implicit styles to controls requires an exact match for the types. That is, an implicit style with a target type of visual element will not be applied to a button since their types do not match exactly. Suppose you're considering whether to use a style written by someone else. It could happen that the style is almost but not quite perfect for your needs. For example, it might have five setters, four of which use values you want, but one of which isn't quite right. You can go ahead and use the style, but then override the inappropriate value. Styles provide the default values. Explicit property values on the control are applied after the style and take precedence. Suppose you have a property setting in a style. 
You apply the style to the control, but then explicitly set the same property directly on the control. The direct setting overrides the one from the style. The property will take on the value in the direct setting. A style can target a base type of the object to which it is applied. You can write a style that targets a base class. The style can be applied to any of the derived types. For example, here we apply the same style to both a button and a label. Note that this is a different rule than implicit styles. With implicit styles, the types must match exactly. That's not true here since we are using explicit application of the style. Let's finish with a special case that's interesting and shows a slightly more dynamic way to achieve what we've been talking about. It is possible to create a style in code. This lets you use runtime determined values in your setters. This is rare but can be useful for code generated UI or when you need the full power of a code behind to create, modify, and update the style at runtime. It is common for two styles to contain a duplicate setter. You might be trying to create a cohesive look for your UI where your controls use a consistent background color. The background color setting will then likely appear in more than one of your styles. Here is another case where this can happen. You might want all of your buttons to look basically the same. However, buttons that perform important actions like buy, cancel, or submit might be emphasized by using a different border color. You would have two styles both targeted at button that would contain all the same setters except for one border color. If you are not the owner of a style, it might not be possible to modify it to fit your situation. You could apply the style to your controls and then add explicit property settings to override the style values you don't want. However, this is tedious to code and results in repeated XAML. A new style can be inherited from an existing style. The new style inherits all the setters from its base. Use based on to indicate your style's base. You have to use a static resource to identify your base style. The target types of the base and derived styles must be compatible. They can both target the same type. The base style's target type can be a base class of the derived style's target type. A derived style will typically want to modify its base. It can extend its base by adding a new setter that did not appear in the base. And it can customize the base behavior by including a setter for the same property as a setter in its base. The setter in the derived style overrides the one in the base.